What is a retro motorcycle? Is it a motorcycle that looks old in some way, but underneath has all the same basic parts and technology of a standard new motorcycle? Maybe it's a motorcycle that points back in some way to a time period or to a specific motorcycle from history. I'm guessing when you hear the word retro in the context of motorcycles, you probably think of companies like Triumph or Royal Enfield, and that makes sense. These manufacturers have figured out how to turn this idea into really the core of their business. But there's one motorcycle company, a company that you may have never heard of, an American company actually, one that still exists today, a rather new company that has taken a completely different approach to building retro motorcycles. Their name is Janus, and this is their story. Richard Warsham grew up in an old cottage outside of Blacksburg, Virginia. Interestingly enough, Richard didn't really grow up around traditional motorcycles like so many other men who've started motorcycle companies. But he did grow up around architecture, his father running a small architecture firm, and his mom being an architectural historian. So beyond running around with his brothers, he had many chances at a young age to build things and to sketch out ideas, and even to try out his dad's CAD machine. Like so many young boys, he was fascinated with cars, and even designed his own car parts, sketching, and even using some early 3D programs. His first experience with two-wheelers, though, was when his dad decided to surprise his mom by giving her her dream vehicle, a Vespa 50. One that they actually rolled inside the house and then placed on the dining room table and even started before calling her in the room, which was quickly filling with thick blue smoke. Richard learned to ride that Vespa, but besides that, his only real sustained exposure to two-wheeled life actually came in college as there was an active moped gang there just sort of ripping around the streets on their smoky little two-strokes. In college, Richard studied literature at a small school called Thomas More, and eventually he transitioned to Notre Dame to study architecture, and specifically classical architecture. That is, the study of the way buildings have been designed and built through all of history, not just focusing on modern architectural techniques. Going forward, I think that this way of viewing design will ultimately have a massive impact on the way that he and Janus as a whole would view motorcycle design. And it was also in college that those early days seeing people riding scooters brought him to want to get his hands on one of his own. Imagine a guy who starts his own motorcycle manufacturing company, doesn't get his own motorcycle till college, and even then, it's not a real motorcycle. It's just a moped. I'm kidding. Chill. So his first moped was a vintage Gorelli two-stroke, and it was really his sole means of transportation while at Notre Dame. In looking for someone to work on his old moped, he met a guy named Devin Beek, who was not only fixing these kinds of old, vintage Italian mopeds, he was also a part of a community of people who were wrenching on these old mopeds and even giving them performance mods. Over time, they became good friends, and Devin continued to develop his ability to make these old 50cc two-strokes create more and more power. Doing some pretty radical stuff, including bore kits, but also building their own expansion chambers, they would get these bikes to make amazing power. Eventually, they started to chop up old mopeds and turn them into full-blown little sort of mini Grand Prix bikes, which was really the inspiration for Janus's early motorcycles. At a certain point, they realized that they could move on from just working on other people's designs and really just build their own motorcycle, which brings us to the first complete Janus motorcycle, the Paragon. Now, I don't think many people outside of the Janus community realize that they have this performance background and that early small race bikes were really their passion. If you look at the Paragon, it's right in that tradition of early two-stroke Grand Prix racers. It made 14 horsepower from a 74cc liquid-cooled two-stroke engine, paired to a completely hand-built and incredibly lightweight frame. It had a 24mm Makuni flat-slide carb with a custom expansion chamber, and altogether, the Paragon weighed just a bit over 100 pounds. Now, the goal was to build six Paragons, but only one was ever built. Regardless, the suggestion kept coming up that they should just start a full-blown production company and make motorcycles, so in the summer of 2011, Richard and Devin went for it. Now, when a new budding motorcycle manufacturer sets out to create two-wheeled machines, there are a few big decisions that they have to make but mainly they have to decide what kind of motorcycles they're going to make. And in essence, without really even knowing it, their work so far had essentially been retro. For a retro motorcycle to be truly retro, it has to be pointing back in some way, either to, again, a specific motorcycle from the past, or a specific set of motorcycles from within a time period, from maybe a certain part of the world, say British motorcycles from the 60s, 
as that's the look that most companies are going for these days. Or the motorcycle can just point to a specific era altogether. And this is why motorcycles like, say, a Triumph Bonneville and a Kawasaki Z900 RS, and even an MV Agusta Super Veloce, though they're all different, they can all be truly retro. They may not seem to have all that much in common, but that's mainly because those companies have different notions of what retro means and how it can fit into their own design. And also, really it's because these bikes are all pointing to different kinds of motorcycles from the past. So when it came time for Richard and Devin to design their first production motorcycle, a motorcycle that would be thoroughly retro due to its founder's love of everything old, they decided to build something entirely different than what was available. A motorcycle that would point to lots of different styles and parts of history, but in many ways, it would be a bike modeled after the kinds of motorcycles that existed really at the very beginning of this whole thing we call motorcycling. A time when motorcycles were very unlike what we have today. They would call their company Janus. Janus was the Greek god of transitions, usually depicted by a face that is looking backwards towards the past and also looking forward towards the future. Enter the Halcyon 50. Essentially, this was the Paragon formula in a different package. This design was, in Richard's words, basically just what a motorcycle should look like. To others, it's retro or throwback, but to Janus, the idea was to make something really that exemplifies the basic bare bones of a motorcycle. In this case, hardtail with a sprung saddle, really being your only rear suspension, more on that later, powered by a 50cc water-cooled single, tuned to make roughly 10 horsepower. It was basically a little two-stroke wonder, and those who got these bikes loved them. Of course, comparing their current models to this original Halcyon shows how much more refined their bikes have gotten, but they're really cute and really endearing. Of course, moving a bike like this, or really any bike, into actual production is a different kind of task than just building a single motorcycle. With 25000 in investments, they got to work and built their first actual production Halcyons. Over three years, they built 43 bikes, all 50 cc's, featuring much of the design language that we see from Janus today. Which is still, in many ways, very much in line with that lightweight race bike vibe, but again, these bikes hearken more to the very early days of motorcycling, from the small, sort of edged gas tanks to the hardtail frames with sprung saddles. Though now Janus produces bikes with more traditional rear suspension, the newer 450 fuel-injected model has a somewhat hidden rear suspension, much like Philip Vincent's original design. Now, in 2014, the business brought on Jordan Swartzendruber and Grant Longenbaugh. And these guys really helped inspire Richard and Devin to see the bigger picture and see the potential of this whole business. This led Janus to create a Kickstarter for a new fully EPA-approved model range, and really just to help them up their game overall. This was in 2015, and they raised 30 k to launch this new line, a line of 250cc four-stroke bikes called the Halcyon and the Phoenix. The Phoenix being a cafe racer, and the Halcyon keeping that classic hardtail early motorcycle style. I think it's important to understand that these bikes were really just the kinds of motorcycles that Richard and Devin wanted to make. Cool, fun, lightweight bikes, that was the goal. It wasn't as intentional as you might assume, it wasn't like they were doing loads of market research to optimize their products or try to fill some sort of niche in the market. Often the best way to make a great product is just to make what you want, and then you find out that there's other people out there like you who find that kind of thing cool too. Now over this time, they realized how fortunate they were to be building these bikes in this specific part of the country that is right in Goshen, Indiana. Because they found out quick that in this area, a place where about 80% of the entire RV industry comes from, it's ripe with craftsmen, from fabricators capable of doing really high-level stuff, to one of their main connections, which is the craftsmen within the Amish community, who take all of the Janus design parts and actually build them, from the frames for their 250s, along with most of the brackets and all of the leather work, the gas tanks, the exhaust. Listen, if you've been looking for an Amish-made motorcycle, these Janus bikes are the closest thing you're going to get. And if you're concerned with your motorcycles being built off the grid, these primary parts are basically manufactured by the Amish using generators. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> the fact that most of what makes up these bikes is designed in-house by Janus and crafted right in the small town of Goshen, like a few blocks from their headquarters, it's just really impressive. Everything is powder-coated, and that really gives these bikes an amazing look. 
from the hand-done pinstriping, the way the fenders are bent to the right shape. I mean, this is really old world stuff, and to me, it's just really cool. Currently, Janus has three models, two 250s, which are carbureted bikes, powered, yes, by Chinese engines, but these are essentially Honda CG engines, which if you know anything about the history of the Honda CG engine, it was built to essentially be indestructible. It's one of the most durable engines Honda ever made. Their current 250cc bikes are the Halcyon and the Griffin, and then there's a 450, which is fuel injected, powered by a more revy 4-valve 450cc single, and that bike is really quite a bit more substantial all around. Now you might be wondering how I seem to have all this inside information about this company, and it's pretty simple. When I first had the idea to work on a video about Janus, I got in contact with Richard and he had this idea that I should come out and try out the bikes and see the entire process. So Janus actually paid for my trip to come check everything out, which was amazing. Now there's no requirement for me to say anything really, They've left that up to me, so the fact that they did make my trip free doesn't mean that I can't say anything negative about what they do or about their bikes. More on that towards the end. But for me, getting to come out and see how everything works was really about understanding the story, which is always my goal when covering a brand or a motorcycle. And it's quite a bit different when we're talking about the formation of a recent company like this. There's no books out there on Janice's history like there is for Harley or Vincent or Kawasaki. So being able to actually see the way these bikes are built and assembled and getting the entire history behind the brand, that's really the stuff I love. So here's what I think. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, it's more fun to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow. To me, that idea is so much more than just the simple fact that you can ride a slow bike on the very edge of its capabilities without really breaking any laws or putting yourself in any danger. That's all true, but it goes deeper than that. In this case, we're talking about a slow bike that is fun, also mainly because it's incredibly lightweight, amazingly nimble. On the 250, for example, you get up to 40 miles an hour and you've gone through all the gears. Again, that's not for everybody. But many riders come to a point in their life where they've experienced all the different kinds of motorcycles, including high-performance sport bikes. Many Janus owners are former sport bike owners, or they still own a sport bike, they just also have you know, like a little 250. And often riders come back to this simple idea, this goal of really just riding, having fun, and keeping it simple. Now in terms of the experience of riding a lightweight motorcycle, this is where many smaller retro road bikes really fall flat for me. The Royal Enfield Classic 350 is a perfect example. Is it a slow bike? You betcha. But is it a lightweight, nimble bike? Not really. See, a Janus 250 weighs 263 pounds dry. A classic 350 weighs right around 400 pounds dry, or 430 wet. That's a huge difference. It does make a bit more power, but if you're going for that riding a slow bike fast and you want it to be light and nimble, in my opinion, Janus's motorcycles beat most of what's out there. I mean, the Janus 450 weighs more than 50 pounds less than a Royal Enfield Classic 350. This is where it becomes apparent that retro bikes are usually just retro in looks only. They often lack all of the character of those original bikes. These Janus motorcycles aren't lightweight and nimble because they're using rare metals or carbon fiber. They're lightweight because they're simple. There's just not much to them. There's no rider aids. Heck, some of the models don't even have a tachometer. It's not like you need it when you're basically riding a 250cc dirt bike. That simplicity is apparent when you see them in real life. You can see right through them much like a proper old motorcycle. Now, while I visited, I got to ride all of the models, but for me, the 250 Halcyon is where it's at. It is freaky light. Like, you need to make sure it's not too windy before you go riding. It's hilariously fun with that sprung saddle. I absolutely loved that. It's carbureted, it's simple, beautifully designed and crafted. Just amazing, exactly what motorcycling is all about, in my opinion, for me at least. Janice calls this kind of riding ramblin'. This type of riding they do where they just kind of go out on a bike like this and have fun. It's all about getting back to that joy you experienced when you first rode a motorcycle. And trust me, if you've ridden all kinds of different bikes and you jumped on something like the Halcyon 250, you'd know what I'm talking about. For virtually every segment within the motorcycle market, there's a premium option. Whether it's dirt bikes, scooters, touring bikes, sport bikes, cruisers, you can really find special, cool bikes of every kind in all of those segments. But for the small displacement street bikes in this class, 
You're going to be hard pressed to find much that you could describe as really special. Of course, there are other options. Janus doesn't act like they're making the only cool small bike. I mean, you could even get an old cheap dual sport that will give you plenty of smiles per mile. What Janus is offering is something special, and it's really not for everyone. Not everyone cares to have a bike that's made specially for them, where they pick many of the colors and parts. Most of us are just used to picking, you know, one of the three boring colors and moving on. Janus does ridiculous things, like while they're making your bike, you get an album and you can access it online. While they're putting the bike together, they're taking pictures along the way and uploading them onto the album so you can see the progress of your bike as it's being made. Again, most people probably don't care about stuff like that, but for some, it's a really cool thing. I think people put Janus in the same camp with some other companies that are out there that basically just order a bunch of Chinese parts and throw them together, and that's pretty much it. Now, I don't want to name names, but I did some research on a British company that at first appears to be doing something very similar to Janus, and the, yeah, the more I researched it, <laughs> they're absolutely not. Janus, though small, is a proper manufacturer, and they function like a small business. That company I mentioned in particular is very shady at every level, from making an absolute garbage, unreliable product to apparently making those who purchase their bikes sign an agreement promising that they won't give negative reviews of the bike, which there's no way that would hold up in court. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Janus is probably the most American, Midwestern small business you've ever seen. As a small company, they go out of their way to help those who have bikes, and I can say I witnessed this. You know, I spent a lot of time at their headquarters just hanging out and working on this video, and I heard these phone calls happening. They almost go too far above and beyond at points to help people who own Janus bikes. And that's really part of what you're paying for, is that sort of personal touch and experience that you just, you don't get from really any other motorcycle manufacturer. But there's some cool stuff, like the 250 has one of the longest warranties in the entire motorcycle industry at four years. You know, I think you might assume that a company like this wouldn't even have warranties for their bikes. But it does, and that's because it's such a simple, tried and tested setup, not a lot can go wrong, you almost can't break these. And most fixes would be simple, and you can actually work on your own bike and stay within warranty. That might be the craziest thing. So what criticisms do I have? Well, really just one. And it's one that I doubt Richard or Janice as a whole would ever deny. In the end, no matter how cool and unique and handcrafted these bikes may be, there's no denying that they're expensive bikes, not exactly for what they are. When you think about what the components are for these bikes, how they're made, where they're made, it's really not that expensive. But at a sort of base level, the Halcyon 250, for example, that I found so fun, it's still just a little thumpy, vibey 250, that's quite slow for a street bike, and of course there are more affordable ways to get a pretty similar experience. A Duke 390 is a great example. That's a bike that also embodies much of the spirit of Janus motorcycles. It's a lightweight, peppy, fun little motorcycle, and it's insanely popular for that reason. Of course it's also kind of ugly and plastic and really not that appealing to everybody. But you get the point. These motorcycles just aren't for most riders, and it's important to understand what these bikes are if you're seriously considering getting one, and if you're comparing them to other retro bike options. With that being said, I really do think that the 450 is meant to fill that spot nicely. In a lot of ways, that is the smart option. But again, it's a pretty expensive purchase, especially when you build it to your exact liking. So for me, buying a Janus isn't about doing what's smart any more than buying a motorcycle is ever about making the most logical decision. So give me that dumb little carbureted bike that I need to warm up for like 10 minutes, just like my old bike. To me, that's where it's at. To some, it's really not a plus to have a bike that needs to warm up, or that is simple enough for you to work on. But to get back to our original question of what makes a real retro motorcycle, to me it's this stuff that gives the bike more soul and gives you a more meaningful connection with the bike. Along with the fact that it's a bit more handcrafted and lightweight. All of these things make for a motorcycle that is retro not just in looks, but also in experience. When I got back home from this trip, I took a quick ride on my Triumph just to feel, you know, what the difference was between the bikes I'd been riding for the last few days. And having ridden retro motorcycles, let me tell you, these Janus bikes are much more like my old bike from the 60s than they are different. 
Sure, they're a bit more refined, a bit more usable, a lot less false neutrals, but having ridden, say, a Triumph Bonneville 900 with its fake air-cooled engine and ride-by-wire throttle, these bikes are much older in character than a bike like that. Now, I'm sure it's not surprising that I'm a fan of a company like this. I've always loved stories of innovative people with an almost silly level of entrepreneurial spirit setting out to start your own motorcycle company, which by the way, that's almost never a smart business pursuit from Eric Buell to Philip Vincent. I mean, you just, you have to admire these kinds of stories. Even if the kind of motorcycle Janice is making isn't for you, there's no denying that what they've done with very little investments in building really unique motorcycles and really carving their own path in a pretty ruthless market, it's impressive. And as we witness the constant automation of vehicles and the ongoing push to make motorcycles safer and more computerized, companies like Janus push to make motorcycles with a very old world feel. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, if you guys want to check out these motorcycles, I've linked their site below. You can go and spend some time building your own bikes if you want. It's pretty fun. They have a really nice online bike builder. So go check it out. Thanks for watching. And big thanks to Janus for letting me come out and ride their bikes and really learn what their story is. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Ride safe.